I think there's a strong possibility that we're at a turning point in history, a complete revolution in human affairs with the discovery of totally new energy sources. Becoming a reality, a local inventor has discovered a way, hear this, to use water to run your car. It's a major breakthrough that will no doubt make motorists happy. And as Ralph Robinson explains, the Pentagon is also showing lots of interest in this project. Water has always been considered a precious commodity, but Stan Meyer's invention may make it even more valuable. He has developed what's called a water fuel cell. It has taken the place of his old gas tank. The water fuel cell breaks down water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used to run his dune buggy. I don't care if you use rainwater, well water, city water, ocean water. If you don't have any fresh water, go ahead and use snow. If you don't have any snow available to you, they use salt water because there's no adverse effect to the fuel cell. Mark currently perfecting a water fuel cell for cars. It will cost about $1,500. He says it won't need any maintenance and you won't have to replace it. The man who invented an engine that can run on water says he's been offered a billion dollars in cash by oil producing countries to sell his patent. So far, he hasn't sold. Environmental specialist Jan Porter talked to the inventor who thinks that the U.S. auto industry could produce cars that run on water now if they wanted to. Our industrial base of the world is based on the utilization Stan of Meyer has a car that runs on water, and that's drawing crowds okay. at this year's Extraordinary Science Conference in Colorado Springs. Myers has developed what is called the water fuel cell injector. The injector breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is what powers the car. Basically all we do is replace uh, the spark plug and replace it with the water fuel cell injectors you see right here. Mm -hmm. We simply feed ordinary non-processed water or processed water in here, and as the water goes into the injector, uh, it hits a very high pulse voltage frequency, which instantly converts it into thermal explosive energy. And as a result, we can run this car down the road on water. Meyer's invention was introduced in Britain earlier this month, and now the Brits have followed him here. The fact that we recently took a scientific delegation to witness Stan's work, to really evaluate it, and came back saying, this is one of the most important inventions of the century. There is nothing startling about a machine that can extract the hydrogen from water. What is highly unusual is that it should do so with ordinary tap water. The conventional method is called electrolysis. Meyer has turned that process on its head. Unlike electrolysis, his device doesn't use up large amounts of electric current, nor does it produce an enormous amount of waste heat. For 20 years, he has been refining a method to fracture water, which produces vast amounts of hydrogen on demand. This is not his latest apparatus. He was unwilling to let us point a camera at that. This is the simple device he used to convince a reluctant patent office that his revolutionary concept actually works. Alloy rods, acting as electrodes, are housed in a perspex container that's filled with water. Normal mains voltage is fed in through a transformer, but critically, there is virtually no current consumed, less than half an amp. The result is dramatic. Hydrogen pours off with the flick of a switch. Meyer claims the key is his electronics, which pulses electricity rapidly across the rods at up to 20,000 cycles per second. In a way that's not readily apparent, this process transforms the equation. Whereas in conventional electrolysis, three times as much energy is consumed as is produced in the form of hydrogen fuel, in Meyer's apparatus, the reverse is true. It appears to produce several hundred percent more energy than it consumes. Stan has something that's characteristic of the people that sound like they've done something to tap zero-point energy. 
uh, has high frequency, high voltage, and there's a combination of the two at which something occurs. If I did this with standard electrochemicals, I need current, and the water should rise a degree every couple of seconds. With stands, it'll run for a half hour, and, you, and the water temperature hasn't changed. Something's different. There is no question that the gas coming off in such abundance is hydrogen. Mar ignites it to produce a high temperature flame able to cut through metal. Uh, with a little invention, we could get standalone devices to run all over the world. Um, I think it would be an inc what I would can be concerned about is the people that sell energy would be essentially bankrupted, and they may not go easily. The technology being developed was not only to eliminate the pollution, the fossil fuel pollution and run it off of water, but also be able to process the air in such a way that we can revitalize the energy levels of the atmosphere to take it back to the original position prior to the Industrial Revolution. Now, we've been doing and developing this technology in a way as a retrofit energy system. In other words, what good is it to put it in the home heating if you have no fuel source to be able to run the trucks and operate the automobiles? What good is it if you don't have an energy source that you cannot put into industry and maintain the industrial base? What good is it, for example, if you cannot be able to maintain aviation? We're here in the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission. You ever hear about the Council? Uh, the group of 300, you hear about the internationalists that are controlling to bring in a one world government. Now, the attitude that the multi internationalists is to come up with zero growth, industrial growth, zero population growth. When I was making a presentation in Geneva to 52 uh, nations there, I was blocked in presenting this technology, not because of the viability of the technology, because the international attitude is they do not want industrial growth to be maintained. There's a move to try to force the countries to accept that they would sign over their natural resource rights. And if you sign over your natural resource rights, you have taken over the countries without even firing a shot. This is to help bring in a one world government. The number one thing that will diffuse the entire episode and be able to maintain us is to bring an alternate energy source in that we can be able to sustain and maintain not only the industrial base of this country but of the world. And therefore I will share this information with you. And once I share it with you, then you have a responsibility. I'm sharing a responsibility to you so great. Now the power structures to be, we all hear about the guys who invent the, the carburetors that go 200 miles per hour and what have you, and they never get out of the market area. We talk about high energy systems, a development of high technology, and they never seem to get out in the marketplace. Why is that? You know, and the Rockefeller, Rockefeller was a very smart man to get our economies to operate on fossil fuel. He got a hold of a think tank, and in the think tank he says, I want you to come up with motivating thoughts that would demotivate, demotivate the people in order to bring us up on the fossil fuels. You see, at that time, we're talking about high energy research and development, are we not? And yet Rockefeller wanted to convince the population of the world that we need fossil fuel to maintain the economy and therefore suppress and prevent altered energy sources to come forward. And you know when the Arabs came to me and offered me a billion dollars, gold cash, simply to stop on the technology. And when I said no, I will not do this. And he said you will be stopped and I said why is that? He said, because the apathy of the American people is such that they will not come behind you. And for a long time, that statement stood out. But I will assure you, today, not only in the United States, but in the world, that they're coming together in one accord. To say it's enough. Unfortunately, there are those who seek power control by greed, right? And seems to have the desire to control man under greed form of a sickness and unfortunately in my many battles we've had to overcome this type in order to bring this technology out. Now it became quite obvious that all I had to do is to restrict the amps and expose the water molecule to opposite voltage zone. Would not the native charge oxygen and add now be attracted to the positive voltage zone? Under law of physics, opposite charges were what? 
the trap, right? Would not the positive charge hydrogen atom now be attracting to the negative holy zone? And therefore you're overcoming the electrical attraction force of the water molecule. You're now causing the water molecule to expand. You're changing the time share rate of the electron and you're switching off the covalent bond of the water molecule. And now you're releasing the hydrogen and oxygen and adding for ordinary natural water without any processing without adding any form of chemical to it. It's a physical process. Why? Because do you consume a voltage field in an electronic circuit? No. Voltage performs a physical process of opposite electrical attraction. <laughs> therefore, when you release the hydrogen and oxygen atom, therefore when you release it, you're now processing and using the energy from the hydrogen atom, which is two and one half times greater than that of gas. Now how do we do this? We do it in such a way that, that we don't consume a great deal of power. The Lord had me develop what we call the VIC coil. And we've taken the voltage zones here and we've now constructed a resonant cavity. Now, is not natural water a dielectric liquid? Sure it is. In order to do this now, when I put the dielectric liquid between two electro electrical plates, what do I form? Electronic guys, capacitors, you and I. Now, if I hook the coil in series to this capacitor, here and here, what do I have developed? A resonant charging to do I not? And therefore now you set up a pulsing where you're now taking like 12 volts and amplifying up to 20,000 volts, and as you pulse this, you're now creating the magnetic field of the coil, which opposes the movement of the electron. And because of the inductance capacitance of the coil, you're now allowing voltage to be applied across the resonant cavity and restricting amplitude by 90 degrees. So therefore, when you adjust the pulse frequency, you're tuning into the dielectric properties of water, amplitude goes down to minimum, and voltage tries to go towards infinity if the electronic components will allow it to occur. And we know in electrical power, there's two aspects to electrical power, right? There is amp flow, which consumes electrical power, isn't that so? And then you have voltage. If I were to restrict the amps, what do we have left over? Voltage. Voltage is not consumed in an electronic circuit, therefore it becomes potential energy. Can you use potential energy to perform work? The answer is yes. Hey, we found out that as you increase voltage amplitude, Hydrogen gas is not being produced in a linear function in reference to amp flow, because we're restricting amp flow. It's now being produced in an exponential function. The higher the voltage, the more hydrogen gas is being generated. Now we find out some very interesting things. As we attenuated the amplitude in reference to pulse frequency, we hit resonant action. We started supercharging the process. When we hit resonance, we found out that if we shut it off, we allow the resonant action to to maintain for five seconds, shut it off. We were producing hydrogen gas for, for 94 seconds. So if you divide five seconds, 94 seconds, we're producing hydrogen gas 19 times more in a power output state than on the input state. I'm not amazing. So in developing this type of technology, you not only have to comply with the law of economics, but you're going to have to comply with all the safety code regulations. Otherwise, you can't get it in, right? So we found out that when the multi gas is coming off the water, if you send it to a small little passageway, somewhere along the line, the natural, the non-combustible gases separate the hydrogen and oxygen and atom. Now, you know, in the law of physics, it's a requirement that the hydrogen and oxygen atoms come together, right? But if you keep them separated, can they, can they spark a night? And the answer is no. Tired of pumping expensive gasoline into your car? Well, one Japanese company reveals an eco-friendly car that runs on water. Using the company's generating system, water is converted into electrical power. Let's take a look at this amazing development. All you need is a liter of water, any kind of water to be exact, whether it's river, rain, seawater, or even Japanese tea. Genepax unveiled a car that runs on water in the western Japanese city of Osaka. They say it's an electric-powered car that runs solely on hydrogen dioxide. The main characteristic of this car is that no external input is needed. The car will continue to run as long as you have a bottle of water inside for you to add from time to time. 